So you're coming to Boston, you're moving to the city, and considering different areas you might want to live in, and considering Back Bay. Good news for you, in this video we're talking about what there is to do in Back Bay, what that lifestyle looks like, and of course, the real estate you can buy and rent in Back Bay. So whether you're familiar with it already or not at all, we're talking all about Back Bay in this video. So let's get into it. Hey there, welcome to the channel. Glad to have you. My name is Jacob Pystrup. Real quick, if you're moving to Back Bay or anywhere else in Boston, you're relocating and you want help with that process of buying or renting in Boston, I'm a real estate advisor. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send us an email or a DM on social media, whatever works for you. Let's get that conversation started. As much as I love making YouTube content, what I really love is my job of helping relocation buyers move to Boston and sharing this beautiful city with you. So if that sounds like you, let's get in touch. So let's get into the video, Back Bay. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What do people do in Back Bay? And of course, towards the latter half of this video, the real estate you can buy and rent in Back Bay. All the timestamps will be below, so if you want to skip ahead to a particular section, by all means, go for it. So Back Bay, you know, it's actually funny because for the longest time, I had considered myself to have lived there for a couple years. I went to Northeastern and at the time, I was like, yeah, I live in Back Bay. Northeastern is in Back Bay. Wasn't till later on that I realized actually Back Bay is cut off at Mass Ave and Northeastern is a couple blocks too far west of Mass Ave. So it's not Back Bay, but I consider myself familiar with the area. I still say that I thought I lived in Back Bay when I was in college. Um, regardless, I am familiar with it. It is beautiful. I mean, I'm in Back Bay all the time with clients, shopping at the Peru, getting dinner at Newbury Street. Like there is a ton of stuff to do in Back Bay. So let's talk about it. One of my favorite parts of the city, Back Bay is really the quintessential, you know, Boston lifestyle. It has a ton of stuff to offer. Lots of, you know, shopping, entertainment, lots of beautiful restaurants, you know, stuff to do. And of course, some phenomenal real estate in Back Bay. Now, I will say it is one of the more expensive parts of Boston. You know, it is up there as far as being expensive along with Seaport, with Beacon Hill. You know, it is up there as far as price and as far as rentals go in Back Bay. But we will get into that later on in this video. Now, if you live in Back Bay, what you're really getting is the location. You pay for a premium location to be in Back Bay. Back Bay is an affluent area. It's very walkable. It is very historic, charming, and beautiful. One of the most beautiful parts of Boston, in my opinion. You really have a mix of just every aspect of city living in Back Bay. You have your historic brownstones. You have your high-rise luxury condo buildings. You have your, you know, kind of boutique shops along Newbury, and you have your, you know, big brand, bigger stores at the Peru. You have a bunch of variety and things to do beautiful parks, you know, the Charles River is right there along Back Bay. You just have a mix of absolutely everything in Back Bay, and that is why it's such a popular area. And if you live in Back Bay, again, you have a mix of pretty much every kind of lifestyle you can think of. So if you are someone who really likes that traditional, you know, Boston brownstone lifestyle with some of these beautiful historic homes from the 1800s, you will see plenty of that along Beacon Street, Marlboro Street, and of course, Commonwealth Avenue or Com Ave. Plenty of green space. I mean, you got the Com Ave Mall going through Com Ave, um, the Charles River Esplanade. You have the Public Garden all the way at the edge of Back Bay. Tons of green space. The nature is beautiful. It really is a nice mix between, you know, that urban city living and that more neighborhood feel, you know, green space and parks. You have a blend of both. So Back Bay really has a very nice, charming neighborhood kind of feel to it. Um, it's also a very organized part of town compared to downtown. Back Bay is a lot more organized. And the way I mean that is with navigation, with getting around, you know, getting a feel for the area, Back Bay is pretty organized. It's got a pretty, you know, standard block system. Um, it's nice, it's, you know, organized. There is a method to the madness where in downtown Boston, 
not really the case. So Back Bay is pretty easy to familiarize yourself with the area, easy to walk around, easy to know where you are if you know how the street system kind of works. So between Mass Ave and the Public Garden, there's actually an alphabetical system to the streets. So if you're all the way towards the east at the Public Garden, it goes from A to H with the street systems. So if you know what street you're on, you kind of get a sense of where you are in Back Bay. So from the Public Garden to Mass Ave, it goes A through H. So you have Arlington, Berkeley, Clarendon, Dartmouth, Exeter, Fairfield, Gloucester, and Hereford. So it goes from A to H, and if you know which street you're by, you know where you are in Back Bay. So like I said, you have a decent mix between all lifestyles in Back Bay. So if you want that Boston Brownstone, you'll find it. If you want that luxury high-rise condo, you'll find that too. You see everything in between in Back Bay. Now, if you prefer that, you know, urban city-like living, you can find that very easily in Back Bay. So if you're not about the brownstones, you prefer a luxury condo, you can find that, okay? You've got a bunch of prestigious buildings to choose from. One of the newest ones in Back Bay is One Dalton. The Four Seasons residence is at One Dalton. Brand new, it's gorgeous, it is expensive. Everything in Back Bay is expensive, but some other options you will have are the Mandarin Oriental residences, the Clarendon, the Carlton House, Trinity Place, and the Belvedere. Those are just some of them, but those are kind of the most prominent, you know, condo buildings in the Back Bay area. And if you enjoy shopping, dining, you got a bunch of choices in Back Bay. So you have shops along Newbury Street, Boylston Street, there's the Prudential Center, the Peru, Copley Place. I mean, you just got a boatload of stuff to choose from in Back Bay. I mean, Newbury Street is one of the most popular places to go shopping in Boston. Now, it is touristy. It does get pretty busy on weekends, but it is beautiful. You'll see people out shopping around, going from restaurants to shops and, you know, stopping in between. It's beautiful. It is a really fun place to check out. And fun fact about it, the closer you get to the public gardens, in other words, the further up the alphabet you go towards Arlington, if you're following the streets, the more expensive the shops get. So if you're close towards Mass Ave, they're not gonna be as high end. The further you go towards Arlington, towards the public gardens, is when you start to see the more high end, um, exclusive shops, depending on what your budget is and what kind of shopping you enjoy. Another really great thing about Back Bay is that you are very central. Now, you could say the same thing about anywhere, you know, in the city, because that's what you get living in the city. You're very central compared to the suburbs. But I mean, Back Bay is close to everything. You're close to downtown, close to Cambridge, close to the medical centers, close to Seaport, South Boston. Um, and for commuting purposes, if you have a car, it is very easy to commute. Uh, Starwood Drive has several on ramps through Back Bay. It's easy to get to the Mass Pike, you know, just driving around, it is easy to get on and off the highway in Back Bay, which is what I mean when I say in Back Bay, you're paying for the location. So like I said, Back Bay is a very, you know, prestigious, affluent, quintessential Boston neighborhood. You have a lot of history from the brownstones going back to the 1800s, lots of these, you know, architecturally beautiful buildings throughout Back Bay. So you got the brownstones, you got the Trinity Church, Boston Public Library, there's Boston Architectural College. I mean, overall, it's just a very historically rich part of town. That's one thing I love about it, and that's one thing that a lot of people appreciate about it who move to the Back Bay area. You have just a very nice blend between, you know, the old historical and the new modern. It just comes together very nicely, so you have everything in between in Back Bay. So enough about the lifestyle. Let's get into what you're really wondering about if you want to move to Back Bay the housing market, and how far your money goes in Back Bay. So most of the real estate market in Back Bay, whether you are purchasing or renting, is condos. You have a lot of condos. You do have some single family homes, all attached. Uh, those are gonna be the town homes along Beacon Street, Marlboro, and Com Ave. But for the most part, a lot of the real estate market in Back Bay is condos. Now, a single family in Back Bay will start at about two and a half million dollars on the low end and go up to about 15, 16 million on the high end. And the bulk of sales will happen between four and seven million dollars. To give you perspective, there have been 12 single family sales in Back Bay in the last two years. Compare that to the 326 condo sales in the last one year in Back Bay. 
So that's what I mean when I say the majority of sales happening in this area are condos, not so much single family. So if you're looking at buying a condo, obviously this will be where you have the most options. So let's walk through a studio, one bed, two bed, and then three bed condo in Back Bay, just to get a feel for the price and where they're at in the market. Obviously on the lowest end of the price spectrum you will see in Back Bay, is gonna be a studio. If you really wanna squeeze that budget in Back Bay by buying a studio, and you can also live in a place that's less than 400 square feet, the lowest you'll see is in the 300,000 for a studio in Back Bay. And I mean like that's like bare minimum on the low end, you know, definitely below 400 square feet, that's the lowest you will see. And a studio could go up to about 700,000 or so, bigger in size for about you know 600 square feet on the higher end of a studio in Back Bay. Now for a one bedroom, obviously bigger, more expensive, the lowest you'll probably see is about half a million or so for a one bedroom. There could be some options that are smaller and lower in price, but for the most part, probably starting at about half a million for a one bedroom in Back Bay, going up to about 1.2, $1.3 million for the majority of options. Now, some luxury buildings do go higher than that in Back Bay, particularly the Mandarin and One Dalton, but for the most part, you're looking up to $1.3 million for a one bedroom in Back Bay. And with a one bedroom, you could definitely find, you know, 700 to 1,000 square feet of living space, which is, you know, obviously more space to live and breathe compared to a studio. Now, one thing I will say that can be tough to distinguish, um, through the data in the MLS, which is what I rely on to give you these numbers, is you will see something called a one plus in Back Bay and in a lot of places in Boston, not just Back Bay, but a one plus is essentially a one bedroom with another room. So a den, a study, an office, another room that's not a legal bedroom. So they'll call it a one plus, meaning there is one legal bedroom plus another room. So like a study space, a playroom, um, you could technically use it as a sleeping area. It just doesn't legally count as a second bedroom. So if you ever see a one bed unit, um, whether it's Back Bay or somewhere else in Boston that's higher in price and bigger in square footage, maybe 1,200, 1,300, 1,400 square feet, it might actually be, if you look at a floor plan, that it's a one plus. So there is a one legal bedroom with you know, another room like an office, a den, however you want to use it, there's another room in there that you could use as a second bedroom if you wanted to, it just legally doesn't count as another bedroom. Now for a two bedroom condo in Back Bay, very minimum, you're looking at probably 750. You could find something lower than that, but for the most part, you're probably looking at 750 and above for most options. And the bulk of the sales in Back Bay for a two bedroom will probably be somewhere between $1 million and $3 million. Now, the two bedroom condo is by far the most common option you will see compared to a one bedroom or a three bedroom. So there is a lot of variety in price for two bedrooms in Back Bay. Again, 750 on the low end up to anywhere from five to $10 million, if not more, depending on the building. So a building like One Dalton, the Mandarin Residences, or Carlton House will be the most expensive two bedrooms you will see in Back Bay. And again, same thing as the idea of the one plus, you will see a two plus where there's two bedrooms plus an office space or a playroom, lots of ways you can use that room, but an extra room that's not a bedroom. And then finally, anything with three or more bedrooms in Back Bay, obviously gonna be the most expensive, the biggest unit you will find, Realistically, starting from about 1.5 million up to technically 21 and a half million. There was a four bedroom sale at the Mandarin this year for just under $22 million. So again, you have a lot of variety uh, in price in these units in the back bay. Now, that's you know the whole spectrum. The majority of sales will likely be between two million and five and a half million dollars for a three bedroom or four bedroom unit in back bay. So again, just kind of, you know, a general idea of the lifestyle you will see in Back Bay, the price ranges you will see for different unit sizes when it comes to condos in Back Bay. So I hope this was helpful, at least for getting a general, you know, basic understanding of Back Bay. It is beautiful, it is phenomenal, and has such a rich history behind it. It is definitely one of the most popular parts of Boston. So hey, if you are moving to Boston and relocating to this city and trying to hone in on that specific neighborhood that fits your lifestyle and your needs, and you want help with that process, 
Give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email, whatever works for you. Let's start that conversation and get in touch to help you find the best fit for you in Boston. So thank you for watching, I appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you have other content you wanna see about Boston in the future that I can work on, please let me know down below in the comments section. As always, take care, and I will catch you in the next video on the Living Boston channel.